Welcome to the Burden and Blessing Podcast, a study and discussion forum on the truth of God's Word. Our Word of the Week takes an in-depth look at important Bible words so we might increase and deepen our understanding of God's Word of Truth. We pray that these brief studies will enable you to get more out of your daily reading and hearing of God's Holy Word. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Burden and Blessing Podcast. My name is Pastor Tom Nauman. And we're looking at our series again today on the names of Jesus. And today's a pretty sweet one. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. I love that one. Alpha and the Omega. So what does it mean? Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. So among the Jewish rabbis, it was common to use the first and the last letters of the Hebrew alphabet to talk about the whole of anything, so from beginning to end. So Jesus, as the beginning and the end of all things, is a reference to the fact that he is true God. That seems pretty obvious, right? If you're listening to this podcast, I'm sure you confess the fact that Jesus is true God, but fact is, a lot of churches get that kind of mixed up these days. So we need to be clear about the fact that Jesus is true God and true man, 100% of both. Not half God, half man. True God, true man. And this is one of those names, a statement, that totally proves it. He's the Alpha and the Omega. It's a statement about his eternal nature. It can only apply to God. It's seen especially in many verses in Revelation, and well, specifically, Revelation 22, verse 13, where Jesus himself proclaims that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So it's a really awesome name of Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, and it kind of has a few different meanings to it. So first of all, Jesus being the Alpha and the Omega is the fact that he was at the beginning of all things and he will be at the close. It is equivalent to saying that he always existed and he always will exist. We know that Jesus is the Word incarnate. We read about that in John chapter 1 where we, he tells us that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we know that the Word of God was present at the very beginning of creation. In John 1 verse 3, it says, Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. So he was there at the beginning. He was the Alpha. And at Jesus' second coming, he will be there at the end as well, when he comes on the last day, on Judgment Day, to judge all the living and the dead. We can read about that in Second Peter 3, verse 10, and a bunch of other places. So he is also the Omega. He's going to be there at the end. He is God incarnate, so he has no beginning, nor will he have any end with respect to time. He is from everlasting to everlasting. Another meaning of Jesus as the Alpha and the Omega is that the phrase, this name, identifies him as the God of the Old Testament. Sometimes you'll run into people who don't necessarily believe that Jesus was actually Jehovah God, but he was. It's very obvious. And one of the ways in which the Bible proves this is through this name, Alpha and Omega. The prophet Isaiah uses a similar phrase several times to describe the triune God in several places. In chapter 44, verse 6, he says, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. In fact, he uses that phrase, I am Jehovah, the first and the last, three different times in the book of Isaiah. These are clear indications of the eternal nature of the Godhood head and the fact that Jesus Christ is Jehovah God from the Old Testament. So Christ, as the Alpha and the Omega, he is the first and last in so many ways. We've talked about two already. The Bible uses other wonderful names to also describe Jesus' eternal nature, which kind of are synonymous with the Alpha and the Omega. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, he says we are, he is our 
author and finisher of our faith. You see, he is the one who begins it in us and he carries it to completion. Jesus is the word incarnate. That means he is all the promises of the Bible fulfilled, come to life in one person. That means he's both the law and the gospel. He is the sum and the substance of the scriptures. He is the fulfilling of the law, as he tells us in Matthew 5, 17. And he is the beginning of the gospel. He is the gospel, the good news that God's grace has come to us through the person, the life and death of Jesus, our Savior. And that wonderful gospel takes root in us through faith. You want to know an awesome fact? Jesus is found in the first verse of Genesis and in the last verse of Revelation. He is the first and the last, the all in all of salvation. From the justification before God to the final sanctification of his people, Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And only God incarnate could make such a statement. And only Jesus Christ is that word made flesh. I told you it was a cool name, right? Don't you think so? I hope so. And I hope that you come back again and learn more about the names of Jesus as our series rolls on next week. The Lord be with you all. We encourage you to listen for a new word each week on Burden and Blessing Podcast, where we believe and confess that every word of God is true. Until next week. Be assured that God's word is truth and is more precious than gold.